Hey guys, it's May May, and you may have seen over the years that I make these desk calendars that turn into mini albums. This is my 2020 desk calendar, and I want to show you what it does. Now, it doesn't look like a desk calendar right now because I've already filled all the pages, but typically when January starts, this would look like a calendar, and then when the month is over, I would decorate it with a highlight from the month, and it becomes a mini album. See with the journaling on the back? So every page in this book has been done. All my journaling is not done but every page has been done and so now at the end of the year I have this cool mini album but during the year last year I had a cool calendar now what I have decided to do this year is to make it a little different I've actually made every year slightly different and um, this one's going to be no exception to that so there is my whole year of last year so it's a cool little um, highlight reel of last year. Now, you're probably thinking, but it's plain on the front. That's right. I'll be decorating this live on Thursday in my live show at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, so you'll be able to check that out on my channel um, Thursday. But normally, you would have this decorated, and then you put it up, and you have a cool little mini album. Now, we're going to make this one a little different this year, and let me show you. I'm really excited about it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make it bigger. Now, first time I've done this, normally they are six by six. This year, I'm going to make them six by eight and add a little feature. So to start with, what we're going to need is two pieces of chipboard, six by eight, and one piece of chipboard that is six by four, okay? Now, four is a very wide a base for this to stand on. It may be too wide, but so many of you have told me that you struggle getting yours to stand up on the three inch base. And the first year I made it, it had even smaller base. So this is actually, um, I want to say a three and a half inch base, but I just made it bigger this year for those of you who are struggling with that and because our calendar is going to be bigger. All right. So first things first, let's, let's make our holes. Now, what I would do if I were you is I would measure in on both sides and measure down and place my hole. But I went ahead and prepped some pages, and I did some holes without thinking about that. So I'm going to have to use these. But what I'll do is I'll make the mark and then tell you what my measure is, and you'll know exactly where to poke your holes. So these holes are half an inch down and an inch and a half in. Oh, an inch and a quarter. So an inch and a quarter in. So that's what you'll want to do there. Half an inch down and an inch and a quarter in. Now I'm going to go ahead and poke these holes, and they'll match up. Um, I'm going to do something different this year, too. I'm not going to put cardstock on the outside of my calendar. So I've decided that every year I tend to change the way I want my calendar to look when I'm finished. So rather than going ahead and putting cardstock out here, I'm going to leave this blank. You don't see it anyway because when it's standing up, you see the pages. So I'm going to save cardstock. I know that when I go to put my cover on next year, um, I probably won't want whatever I use and why waste the cardstock in my opinion anyway. So there are holes punched. Now we're going to want to attach this guy, okay? You're going to need one binding strip to make that happen. It's super easy. You're going to use a piece that is six inches long by one inch wide, and we're going to score this one. So with this in your scoreboard on the one inch side, I want you to score it at half an inch, and that is going to be your binding strip. Um, that will live here to hold our book together. But while we've got our scoreboard out, let's do another piece. This piece is two by three, all right? Now, all the measurements are in our blog post for you, so you don't have to worry about keeping up with that. Just click the link in the description. You'll get a whole blog post with that in it. So I'm going to score this one at one inch. This is going to be the piece that holds our magnet and then also closes our calendar. So that way, we only pull our scoreboard out once. All right, let's fold this guy and crease him. So I'm going to fold this over. Increase it down nice and snug. And I'll tell you something else. This guy gets folded in both directions because of the way it um, holds the book together. I'm going to fold it and crease it in both directions and go ahead and train that paper to be really loose in the crease. All right, now we can glue this into place. I'm going to use wet glue. You could totally use sticky glue or sticky tape if you wanted to here. But I'm just going to use some Barely Art. And I promise you, it looks like I'm putting a lot more on there because the camera makes it look like more. I'm scratching that on so it's not as much as it looks like. But I'm just going to glue this down to the edge. Make sure it's all the way to the edge without going over. I want it to be nice and flush and glue that in place. I encourage you to go back and watch my other 
calendar videos if this is the first time you've ever made one. You just never know. You might see some tips and tricks there to help you make your calendar even easier. Now for gluing these two together, I already glued it down and then I forgot to tell you this, so I'm going to re refilm it so I can show you. You want to leave a space in here, okay? You can use your chipboard to help you, so I'm going to just bring my other piece over and show you what I mean. I'm going to add glue to this side, and when we glue it down, we want to leave a big enough space at the score line for this piece to be able to fold backwards and forwards, okay? If you glue it flush, you're not gonna be able to do this. So if you'll just take your extra cardstock and just stick it right next to that piece to give you a spacer and then glue this guy down to that, you will have a much better result when folding backwards and forwards. So see that space that we left ourselves? It's just about, a, it's an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch, but it's really just the width of a piece of cardstock. So let's get that glued down nice and firm and I'll show you what I mean. So now your card, your base can fold either way very easily. See that? And that's what we want. We need it to fold in both directions. All right, that's down there really nice. So now let's bring over our little latch piece, okay? I'm gonna fold that one inch score mark and I'm going to crease it down. And I'm not concerned about this piece so much. That's going to be hidden when I do my decorations. But I do want to corner around this piece. I just think it'll look better. and look, That's how I've always done it. So I'm just going to grab my corner rounder punch. And I'm just going to round it half an inch on either side. Just to give me a little different look. Or just a little something to the little um, flap. And this guy is now going to get glued here. And I want to do that same thing. I want to make sure my score line has plenty of room to fold forward and backwards. Okay, so I'm just going to glue this into place. And then, using my cutting mat to help me find the center, one, two, one, two. This is where I want to be, right here. I'm going to make sure my score line is hanging off the edge. It is clear completely. I do not want to glue it down. There we go. And now when we have our book all put together and this stands up like this, this piece will be what holds our magnet to close it, okay? It'll also be the piece that when we flip this over to show our calendar like this and we turn this under, this will also be the piece in the back that holds it open. So that'll make sense when we get done, but that's why you want to make sure this piece will easily float forward and backwards. Same with this, forward and backwards, okay? All right, now we've got that done, and like I said, I'm not decorating this this year. I'm going to leave it plain until I get ready to finish the book. Let's put our page together. So you're going to need to make some calendars, and I'm going to show you how I did that. So for the calendars, you can see that I've already been stamping mine, and I'm using the large never-ending calendar set. This one is available in our store. We also have this in a small size, and we also have a petite calendar. So you want to make sure if you're making your calendars like this, you're using the same size, the large never-ending set. That's what I'm using. Now, this piece, you know I have forgotten its measurement. Well, let's measure it. This one is the um, two and three-fourths by five-inch piece. So that's what we're going to be stamping on. And I'm not going to show you how to use the calendar set, I mean the stamp set, 100% today. I have a video on that. I'm going to link that in the description because it'll be easier for you to see it that way. But right now I'm going to be doing December. Okay, so what I suggest you do is take your phone and look at the month, okay? And even though the month starts on Wednesday the 1st, I'm not really going to pay attention to that as much as I'm going to pay attention to the outside. So I need this to go from 5 as a second day to four as the top day. So if you look here, I've got five as a second day and four as a top day. And I just center it on my block like that. So now what I do is I ink from five, from four to five. Okay, so I've only inked up between five and four. And it's very important when you're doing this that you don't twist your ink pad. These numbers, the ink can pull in them. So you want to tap the ink pad up and down, kind of kiss it. Now, December happens to have 31 days. If it didn't, if it only had 30, not that December would, but I'm saying if you had a month with only 30 days, you can just clean 31 off, which is what I typically do with a wet wipe or sometimes just with my finger, or you can tape that off before you ink. I just clean it off because I'm a little bit lazy like that. All right, and then I'm going to stamp this down. Now, even if you had like of February where you did 28 or 29 days, you can just use tape before you ink it or just clean it off before you stamp it. 
All right, so that is my month. And this stamp set allows you to get all of your months. So we have them all done. So this is December. I'm going to stack them back up. Now, all I need to do is go through and put my month um, words up here. And I looked and I've noticed that I've never used these kind of fancier words. I've always used the kind of typewriter words because they're my favorite. But I think this time I'm going to use these fancy words. Now, I'm going to tell you something else that you're going to want to do. Trust me when I say this. Even though you might have stamped these and stacked them up like they should go, check them. Okay, so go back to your calendar. Here's January. So it starts on a Friday and it ends on the 31st. So that's a Friday and it ends on the 31st. I'm going to check every time because I don't want to do the work over and over again. So just keep a check and I'm just going to put January somewhere up here. And remember this too. If this one is slightly different than this one, it doesn't matter. They don't go on the same page. And it's just utilitarian. It's just for you to use. And your stamp scrubber is going to come in super handy here because you'll want to use it in between every time you're stamping. And that way you don't have to kind of clean these with a the spray and all that kind of stuff. All right, so there's January. Now let's do February. I'm going to load it up on my block. If you have 12 blocks, just load up on 12 blocks. <laughs> I'm surprised I don't have 12. Again, I'm going to check because I'm chicken. 1 through 28, that's correct. And stamp February. All right, I'm going to run through and get all my calendars done, and we'll get right back together. I should mention something. Shannon pointed something out to me, and she's right about this, okay? I'm not putting the days of the week bar here, but you can. You have the days of the week bar stamp, so if you want to put it there, it'll work. It'll line right up, and it'll be fine. But I don't need it. I just kind of glance. This is my literal glance calendar, so I'm not going to put it there. But you totally can. I just like how clean it kind of looks like that. But it is in your stamp set for you to use. I'm glad she pointed it out because somebody would have uh, mentioned it and I wouldn't have thought to say it. So there you go. So now that you've got your calendars made, let's talk pages. So this is the page in my calendar. This is going to what be what holds each month. Okay, this piece, again, the measurements are in the blog post for you, but I'll tell you real quick. This piece is five and a half wide by seven and a half tall. Okay, and you'll need 12 pieces of that. Then I'm going to mat it with a simple background page. Let me talk to you, this, to you about this for a second. In the past, I have painstakingly chosen paper to be the backgrounds of these when they're my calendar. But over the last year, more times than not, I have added another piece on top and changed the background. So what I've decided to do this year to save cardstock again, I don't want it to be super plain when it's sitting on my desk. I still want it to look cute when I look at it, but I don't want to use all of my best papers and then come back and cover them up at the end. All this makes sense if you've ever seen me do these calendars, but here's what I'm going to do instead. I looked through all of my paper and I found this one, which we do have this in the store, the Autumn Gingham Collection. And I thought these colors would work out so well for the whole year, right? So what I've done is I've kind of gone through and said, okay, January is going to be blue. I picked another month to be blue. Um, November's brown. There's another month that's brown. I can't remember which one. You know, red is for um, Valentine's and Christmas. I've just kind of done it like that. Not Christmas, Valentine's and 4th of July. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I cut these pieces. This piece is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And it is going to be the only decoration that I'm going to put in here until I decorate the page fully. So in my opinion, this will be the only page that could get wasted in the end. But I love being able to use it at least for the year as my calendar. All right, so I'm going to glue this guy down and he mats inside there. All right, so you made your calendars, and so those will live at the top of the book. And here's what I've done different this year. I thought this would be cool. So I have created a PDF for you. It's a free PDF. I'll link it in the blog post that is linked in the description. So you can go and print this. And this is made so it sits at the bottom of your page, like so. And what I thought was cool about it is it'd be a way for you to do kind of an at-a-glance kind of thing. So especially for card makers. So if you want to have this on your work surface, and maybe in January, where you have four or five birthdays, or maybe there's anniversaries or things you want to remember, you could jot them down. And when you're in your craft room, you could remember, I need to make
like a card for this, a card for that, et cetera, et cetera. I thought it'd be cool to have a note section. Plus, the best part, it's going to give me more room to decorate when this becomes my mini album. Pretty cool, right? It's only two inches. We've only added two inches. But it'll be neat to have a place where now I might want to put two photos of an event. Or I might want to do something else. Who knows? I think it'll be cool to give myself a little more real estate this year and just kind of see what's different, right? Okay, so I'm going to glue these down. This piece, I'll tell you the measurement of it in case you decide to make your own. I'll let you know what size this is. So you want this piece to be five by four. Mine got cut a little bit shy, but it's no big deal. But it will be the same width as this guy and four inches tall. And that's a calendar page. So let me show you what I've done already. So before I show you my other calendar pages, let's make sure we get our holes punched. All right. So I'm just going to line this up on the back. And I make this flush to the top, but I sink it in about a quarter of an inch on either side. And you can just flip this over and punch, or you can trace it and punch. And then you'll make sure that all of your holes will line up because you'll use this as your pattern for the rest of your pages for the hole. So these are my completed pages. So I've got, I want to show you how I did the colors. So January's blue. February is red, March is green, April is that kind of pale yellow color. I thought that was pretty for spring. Orange for May, you would think green, which would make sense, but I use it in other places. But I thought orange would be good for like flowers. June got brown, and no big deal, I gave it brown. July got red, August got that yellow again, September got blue, October got the orange, November got brown, and then December got green. So I thought that was really cute. So my calendar will kind of fit the theme on my um, page. It will still have some color. But I do not mind covering that up, and I'm not spending a bunch of time, you know, picking specific pages for that. Look how much journaling space I have on the back. May or may not be good. You might not want to use the back for journaling. You might want to do a whole other mini album page and give yourself 24 pages of a mini album. Let's assemble this guy. Assembly is super easy, okay? What you're going to do is with your holes at the top, you're going to lay your calendar pages up there, and then you're going to place your other your cover on top of that. So you're just making a sandwich, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. The rings I'm gonna use for this one, the rings I'm gonna use for this one are two inch rings. The reason for that, I feel like this one being taller and also longer may get bulkier because I have more real estate to work with. So I'm gonna use these larger rings for this one. You might want to kind of do, do one and then put the cover on top of these. Whatever works easiest for you. So just wiggle that up in there, there's one. All right, so I got both my rings in. Now I'll put my cover on. And you guessed it, we still have to put our magnet in place. Now I want to tell you, you can do this with Velcro. If you don't have magnets, you could totally do this with Velcro and that'd be fine. But here's how I'm going to do my magnets. The magnets we carry in our store are self-adhesive magnets. And they come in packs where you have some that are plus and some that are minus. What I do is I stick these guys together. And notice this year I'm using the big magnet. I feel like this big guy needs a big magnet. Okay, and you're going to peel the backer off of one. So I'm just going to peel this little guy off. Then I'm going to flip it over and place it kind of in the middle, uh, maybe in the exact middle this time. Sometimes I don't put it in the middle, but I think that we can. And I'm going to press that into place. And then all you do, this is so easy to do, you're going to peel the um, adhesive backer cover off of this one. And then you want to stand your calendar up, okay? So you want to bring the cover over to the front, just like so. Stand it up nice and square, and then pick this page up. I may struggle picking it up because it's flat on my work surface there. So I've got this guy nice and square. I'm going to pick this guy up and place it. So wherever it goes is where the magnet will live, okay? Then I just want to press that together. Now you'll see that this will open like this. I can flip this around, and because of how we built the bottom, I'll hold it sideways so you can see it, you can then take this backwards and catch it in the back as well, and that creates your standing calendar. Now, the big rings, you may find you don't want to use the big rings. I like them for this one. I may change them out to the inch and a half rings. The ones I have on my calendar from last year are actually the inch and a half, so they may work, but I thought I'd start with the big ones just in case I needed them, okay? Notice how much of a base we have. That four inch base is really big. I have fears that this one may be tall and get heavy. We'll see. I think what will help us over time is flipping pages, you know, as we go through and we end up having some to the front and some to the back. That'll really help us with the standing and the stability of it. 
but we'll see. I've never done one this size before, so we'll see how it goes. So let's unmagnetize that. Also, I want to tell you this. In the past, I have covered this. I have um, gone ahead and covered all of this. I'm not doing it this time. I'm going to wait. So when I do cover it, it'll match whatever theme I decide to do. So let's stand that little guy back up. And so, um, well, I'll lay it down so you can see the difference in the size too. It's only two inches, but it's roughly, you know, the same thing except for down here where we've added some length. There you go, guys. I don't know how it's going to go. I build these things and then we finish them out throughout the year. If you would like to follow along as I finish my calendar out for the year, you can do that. All you need to do is go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And I always I'll try to. <laughs> Last year was different. I typically uh, let the month go and then I decorate this page in the following month. So like my January page, I would decorate it in February. All right. And I do that on Thursdays. I have Thursday live shows on my channel. And so these always get done on a Thursday live show and you can watch me decorate live. I typically don't have a plan. I typically just get started and do it and we see what happens. So that is my 2021 desk calendar. You may notice that I didn't put the year 2021 anywhere. I know this is 2021 and by the time this is over with, I really don't need have a need for the year to be showing, you know, permanently. So this is how I do it and uh, I think it works great. So here's what we'll do. In our blog post, I will link all the playlists, all the other videos of this calendar that I have. This is my third year, so I have two other calendars that I can link for you guys and that way you can see my other pages and how they have been done. There you go, guys. I hope you're looking forward to this. I really am. I'm going to show you this real quick. When you finish one of these, first off, the reason this even came about is because I want to be a scrapbooker, but I'm not good at it. But I can do one page a month, you know, and then now I have these cute little memories of the previous year and it's just little snapshots. It's not everything from the year, but it's really a cool little way to kind of see uh, to kind of go back and see all the cute little things that happened throughout the year or the exciting things that happened. So there you go, guys. I want to see your calendars. I want to see last year's calendars. I want to see this year's calendars. I want to see when you make these guys. So be sure to share it with us. You can share on our customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com. And if you need inspiration, there's so much over there, guys. You can also come to our Discord and share your pictures and your projects on our Discord. We love to chat about craftiness and we are there to basically build a community and just have a good time together. So I will have links to all of that in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Y'all have a great one now. Bye-bye.